Uh, this is Alex Knopp. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Norwalk Public Library Board of Directors for Thursday, September 9th, uh, 2021 at seven o'clock. Um, and uh, first I'd like to ask, are there any additions to the agenda? And I would like to propose one, which is that we have a uh, moment of silence in memory of uh, Janie Williams' sister who passed away uh, after our last gathering. And- uh, My brother. Know, well, My your brother. brother, I'm sorry, forgive me. I know some of us have expressed our condolences individually to Janie, but I just thought it'd be appropriate for the board to have a moment of silence in his memory. Alex, Thanks. can I add one more if that's okay? Sure. May I add uh, Regina, Regina Crummel, who was a former board member who recently passed away as well. No, I did not know that. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you. I know those uh, people meant a lot. I have to say I had the pleasure of knowing Regina, working with her husband when he was a member of the Common Council. And I know that she was very active in bringing literary skills to prisoners, especially in the Bridgeport Correction Center. And she was very devoted to using library resources to support that rehabilitation work. So thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the library's uh, effort to recognize Domestic Violence Month next month. And uh, Sherelle has invited uh, Nakia Ellis, a representative of the Domestic Violence Crisis Center to talk about how the Crisis Center and the library could partner to uh, recognize victims of domestic violence and talk about prevention. So uh, Sherelle, do you want to introduce anything else about uh, Sure. I just would like to say I want to thank Nakia for taking the time to come and I really want to thank her for her genuine energy for bringing um, attention to domestic violence. Um, they were, uh, they helped out with um, Divya's memorial. And so we've decided to partner to offer um, a series, a four part series program. And um, she has some ideas for the Rose Garden. So um, Nakia. You want to bring your energy to the board and, and, and explain a little bit about what we're doing? Absolutely. So um, good evening, everyone. And thank you again for inviting me to speak to you all. Um, I work for the Domestic Violence Crisis Center and October is our biggest month. Um, we go all out to try to spread as much awareness as possible. Um, we've partnered with the library in the past um, to do um, programming. We've hosted task force meetings um, and every year we have a banner that hangs in front of the uh, main library on uh, facing Belden Avenue. Um, and in previous years, we have done different pinwheel displays um, and pinwheel um, are used uh, by some agencies as um, a, a token of hope, right? People see it and they, they receive hope. So we were hoping to uh, create a pinwheel display in the Rose Garden um, and dedicate that to uh, Divya. Um, if you would just allow me to share my screen for one second, I can show you some images from um, other pinwheel displays that we've had um, in the past. So um, on on the top, you are seeing a pinwheel display that was uh, created in front of Norwalk City Hall in 2019. Um, and at the bottom, there is a display that was created uh, by members of the Westport Domestic Violence Task Force. Um, and that was displayed on Jessup Green in Westport. Um, so essentially, we would want to place these pinwheels um, within the Rose Garden. Um, and we wanted to shine a positive light, put a positive spin on it. So we wanted to um, figure out the number of Norwalk residents that have called into um, our crisis line in the past year. And that total is 1,398. 
Obviously, we cannot put out that many pinwheels in the garden, um, but we were hoping to put out at least 140. Um, so each pinwheel would represent 10 um, domestic violence victims that we were help we were able to help um, in the city of Norwalk. Um, so I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is a little bamboo skewer that we placed in the grass first, and then we just placed the pinwheel on top. Um, however, I completely recognize that uh, there's probably a maintenance schedule as far as mowing the lawn, so we are flexible um, and working around either putting it up at the beginning of the month or at the end or in the middle, whatever uh, the schedule is to cut the grass. Um, but we really think that it would be uh, an appropriate way to spread awareness um, and what better way to do it in, in the Rose Garden that's dedicated to Divya. Thank you, Nakia. Do you want to just briefly also, you know, mention um, the, the program, the series that we're doing? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we are going a four-part series. So it's going to be taking place throughout the entire month of October. Um, there will be workshops in the evening. I believe we decided on Tuesdays. Um, and we will be covering a number of topics around domestic violence. The first week, we will talk about how um, relationships have been impacted uh, by COVID. Um, we'll talk about how domestic violence has increased during COVID. We'll also talk about healthy uh, ways to cope um, living with, with uh, either a romantic partner, even with family members uh, during quarantine, how you can healthy, healthily communicate and resolve conflict. Um, then the second and third week, we'll talk about domestic violence dynamics, so everyone's familiar with the terms and the different types of abuse, um, as well as cover the complexities of domestic violence to really uh, dive deeper and understand um, why um, victims often will stay in that relationship or uh, why it's so hard or so difficult to leave. Um, and then we want to cap off the month uh, by hosting a bystander intervention training so that we can um, have all of our participants walk away feeling empowered um, that they have the tools that if they see um, an unhealthy relationship or if they know someone that's in an abusive relationship that they'll know what to say or they'll know uh, what to do to help out those people. Um, they'll also just be able to keep their own relationships healthy, right, because we're teaching them all the healthy signs as well as the red flags. Um, so that will be um, free to the public and we're really, really excited to be offering that um, virtually this year. Thank you so much, Nakia. It's always wonderful to partner with you. Good. So, do uh, members, yeah. members of the members of the board have any questions for Nikki? Uh, I do. Yeah. Uh, is there a way we can have a visual display at the at the south at the branch South Norwalk as well with some um, We can definitely do that. Um, I have to look at the lawn, but if but if there is a lawn area in the front, we can definitely uh, figure something out and, and do that as well. Um. I'm not sure that there is. I'm trying to visualize it, but if we could, if not, we could have like a planter or something. Um, there, there is a lawn space, um, Patsy, okay. and there's okay. also we have a fence now, a really nice fence, and we can um, also put a banner on the fence and, oh, and good. have yeah. something. Yes. Yeah. So okay. Nikita, you I'm and there. I can set up a time to meet. I was going to say another alternative um, in the past within Norwalk City Hall, we actually had um, students uh, create purple pinwheels with messages of hope um, and they decorated them and we actually displayed them um, and hung from uh, the, the like center atrium in Norwalk City Hall. So we still have some of those pinwheels as well. So if we wanted to do an indoor display, um, we have those resources to do that too. Good. Thank you, Patsy, for this suggestion. Are there any other questions or comments for Nakia? I, ha I have a quick question. Um, will this be recorded so that people can access it later? For, oh, the, the sorry, I the apologize, program. the training. Um, I can answer yes. that. We, yes. we will record it. We record it on the library's end and it goes on um, the YouTube page. Thank you. Good. 
Well, thank you, Nikki. I, I think unless there's objection from any member of the board, then I think from these comments, obviously we're in favor of having the uh, display to complement the training at both the main branch and the Sono branch. Um, and this is actually relevant to a subsequent item on the agenda. And I think in light of the dedication of the garden in memory of Divya, this is a extraordinarily appropriate place to and time to do this. So thank you and to the, your colleagues at the center who came to the memorial for Divya and spoke. That was very, uh, very helpful. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Nikki. You. Thank you, Cheryl, for arranging Great. that. Goodbye, everyone. My pleasure. Bye-bye, sweetie. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the board minutes of July 8th, 2021. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I so move. Patsy moves. Um, thank you. I've looked through them. I don't have any revisions to propose. Does anyone else have any uh, changes or uh, revisions to propose? No, I'll second. Ralph Bloom seconds. Thank you, Ralph. If there are no changes, then uh, I'd ask for a motion in favor of approval of the minutes as submitted. Some Please moment. raise your hand or say aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Then the minutes as submitted are approved. Uh, next, we'll move on to the president's report. Um, I think at the time of our last meeting in July, uh, I think perhaps the health department, as many other public health entities, were hopeful that things would have been better and more improved by now than they have been, but no one anticipated the variant uh, impact. And therefore, I think the uh, changes that we're proposing tonight for the reopening plan are more modest than might have originally been intended. I know Shirelle and I met by Zoom with the uh, city's health director last week, and these, uh, you know, cautious additional steps are ones that the city is in favor of. And obviously we're all waiting for further developments. As you know, the uh, Norwalk High was suddenly closed yesterday because of a outbreak and the need to do contract tracing. So we're still in a very limited uh, public utilization situation. Uh, before I ask Sherelle to summarize the additional opening uh, changes that we're recommending tonight, uh, the city's health director, Lamont Harris, uh, Lamont, uh, uh, wanted me to pass on to the board his appreciation for the fact that the use of both library facilities as vaccination sites has been very important to the city's ability to do outreach with the vaccine. And you'll see in Sherelle's packet, uh, really several, almost several times a week, the libraries are being used as a site. We've reached an agreement that's been honored according to Sherelle very well that the entity that contracts with the city to do the vaccinations does not use library staff for the setup or takedown and that's been honored very well. So I think both the health department and the library are very pleased about this arrangement because it does contribute to access for Norwalk residents to get the vaccines on a fairly regular basis. Uh, Sherelle, do you wanna indicate the four or five changes that are in this policy? And I also like to note that Moina Noor has joined us. Hi, Moina. Um, Sherelle? And these are written up in Sherelle's report, just that the board needs to approve them. So that's why I'm raising them at this time. I think we're waiting on Sherelle uh, for her Zoom connection to resume. 
My apologies for coming on a little bit late. Not too late. Mine too. This is Tom Collin. Hey, Tom. Welcome. <laughs> Prodigal son returns. Had a big journey there. <laughs> We've missed you, so welcome back, Tom. Good to be back. Okay, Shirelle, you, you, you're calling me. You still trying to reach me? She's trying to connect audio. Okay, I just got a message from Shirelle that Tom is using her link. Uh, oh. Does that, does that X her out? Yeah, so she's asking the city to send Tom his own link so that Sherelle can uh, get back in. Somehow I just got a call from her. Yes. On, on my phone. Yeah, so me it's too. All that's messed what, up. That's what it was about. Do you want me to hang up? I should hang up. Um, I, I, if I can get your email address, I can send you a link. Tom, yes. Yeah. Send uh, yeah. T J C E C O N dash uh, three. Can you do that? Say that one more time, a little bit slower. T J C. T J C. E C O N dash three. Okay. At sbcglobal.net. Great. I'll be. I'll send you a link now. Okay. Thank you. I'll hang up. You're still muted. No, I'm here. Got it. Thank All right, you. Shirelle? Yes, Shirelle, yes sir. While you were off, I summarized our conversation with Lamond. Okay. Uh, I indicated his appreciation for the <laughs> partnership with the library on the vaccination sites and that they've certainly respected not having library employees do the setup or takedown. Um, I indicated that because of the rise of the variant, there was not as grand a reopening now as perhaps might have been anticipated, but there were five or six new changes. Mm -hmm. And I was gonna ask you to summarize them even though they're listed in your report. Sure, no problem. So one of them, uh, we, we've had quite a few people, you know, want to come in and sit um, or study. So one of the changes is allowing people to make reservations to use a table, to study at a table for up to 90 minutes. Um, the other is to allow the use of study rooms um, two people per study room so that if, if teachers want to tutor, um, you know, one on one, we can have that. Um, the other is to um, have one room booking per day. We've been getting calls, you know, from condos and different organizations, um, you know, wanting to book the room. So that's um, another. So those were the basic changes and then um, or, or additions. One of the changes is instead of having people reserve computers, they would come in uh, first come first serve just because it's just been a little bit difficult trying to manage. But if they come in first come first serve, they can let us know how long, whether it's the 45 minutes or the 90 minutes. And we think that might be a little bit easier to manage. Okay. Um, and of course the, uh... Uh, additional information is that the uh, mayor has issued uh, a decision to have all city employees be vaccinated, I think by the beginning of October, if I recall. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the matter is being handled by the city's HR department in cooperation with public health and library employees are uh, subject to this policy. Correct. And we also discussed that with Lamond. And so the, the, the gist of that is basically, um, if you're vaccinated, you send in um, your proof of vaccination. And if you're not, they will work out, um, you know, where you have to submit weekly um, your testing results. 
And if people have not had a chance, to, I hope you'll have a chance to listen to or read about uh, President uh, Biden's speech today about uh, additional steps the federal government is taking um, that affects things in Norwalk, like Norwalk Head Start and schools. So, um, uh, Shirelle has summarized the, I have to say, you know, useful but modest changes that we're making, but in light of the COVID variant, it's not really safe to do uh, much more. And, but we'll be, you know, returning to this every month and, and staying uh, as up to date as we can and hopefully things will be on the upswing. Any, uh, any questions on this item before we vote? Tom, are you back in yet? I am. Okay, good. Do you have any okay. idea how, how many employees are not vaccinated? Um, I can anecdotally, we can't ask, you know, how many, but if I had to guess, I, I, the majority of the staff are vaccinated. If, if, if any are not, my guess would be five and under. Thank you. Jarell, I just had a quick question. Um, with the library hours, Monday through Wednesday, um, is 5, 5.30, was that how it's always been or was it later? Um, during COVID, it's, um, it's always been 5.30. We do have a late night at each, each library, yeah. um, Tuesdays at me, I'm sorry, Tuesdays at Sono and uh, Thursdays at me. Okay, and you think that will go back to like a later time when COVID's over? The I'm hoping, yes, Okay. yeah. Because I think more people will be ready to come back into the library. So definitely. Yes. Good question. Thank you. Okay. Any further uh, questions or discussion? Uh, I have to say I'm uh, pleased that Norwalk is taking a cautious approach. And um, I hope uh, we'll continue to do that. Obviously, the start of the school year brings a whole new set of challenges and uh, we hope for families that are back in school or families that find it necessary to continue the uh, remote policy are uh, doing, doing well. So uh, <clears throat> let me put it to a vote. All in favor of adopting the changes to the public library's reopening plan, please raise your hand or say aye. Uh, aye. Are there any objections? Aye. Thank you, Tom. Any objections or no votes? Any abstentions? If not, then it's approved uh, unanimously. Well, thank you. A second item on my report is that we've received the fully executed contract for the blue teapot. Uh, basically uh, similar to as before, but contains uh, three important changes. One of them, it uh, extends the contract for two years rather than just one year based on our recommendation. So it goes through um, two additional years. Second, it allows the Blue Teapot to cater events held by groups within the library. And of course the groups are responsible for cleanup. And third, we've enlarged the uh, seating area around the Blue Teapot to allow her to do uh, additional service under kind of social distancing criteria. And uh, Sherelle, do you have a update on the opening day? Yeah, she sent us an email to say she wanted to open on the 22nd. Uh, she would come in and do some cleaning, I believe on the 20th. And um, I guess um, speak with the health department on the 21st. Great. Well, my birthday's the 23rd, so I would definitely be coming in for something, <laughs> something big and chocolate, <laughs> which we will purchase, of course. So that's just an update. And uh, again, we've tried to recognize that uh, uh, Najol, you know, invested uh, a lot of her resources in creating the blue teapot just before the COVID hit and required the shutdown. So we thought the additional year would be a fair way to recognize uh, an opportunity for her to get a better return on her investment. Any questions about the blue teapot? 
I think I have a related one. I, I was at the library yesterday and, and noticed that outside of the new floor area for, for uh, her, her uh, operation, there's a large open space um, that is sort of, it feels very empty. And, and I, I'm sure it's because of COVID or whatever that we can't have any chairs or anything in that, in that space. Is that correct, Cheryl? Uh, so this is, this is gonna be a little bit difficult um, with us having limited people in and having people sitting and eating. So that's something that we actually need to discuss. Um, I think for her to recoup her return on investment, we will need to have seating in the blue teapot area. But it just seems like if it wasn't, if COVID isn't the issue, that it would be a wonderful place to have chairs where people could sit, could and, sit and eat. Correct. And, yeah, or that's on the carpet I'm talking about, but uh, if that's an issue, it, to have it look warm and friendly. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe so we can put know. something else there. So that's a good point, Patsy. <clears throat> How do, how do regular restaurants operate? I mean, are they we more tightly constrained than they are? Or No, restaurants are trying to make their money. So when it's interesting because when you walk into the restaurant, you have to have your mask. Obviously, right. and then when you, you sit down, you don't have to have your mask, obviously, right. to eat. Now, there are yeah. some restaurants that have um, the plexi, and they've done that really nicely. So as people are sitting across from each other, um, they're divided by by the plexi, but um, the majority of them do not. Okay. Can we? I mean, the question is, can we operate similarly? So that looks like that's the plan. So, but you know, do we limit to one person per table? Um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that might be, you know, an option since people, you know, where the library were telling people they have to wear masks inside um, or social distance. So that could, you know, that could create some controversy, having people sit and be able to eat without their mask. Well, maybe two, two per table or something. But I, I think in this situation, like everything else right now, we're going to go through a trial and error period. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to predict exactly how people will respond, whether anybody wants to come in and sit down and eat or not. Very true. Uh, other than Ralph. Um, <laughs> and Alex. Uh, wait a minute now. Um, so, you know, I think you know, we'll be as cautious as possible, recognizing that, you know, we are allowing people to come in and eat. And maybe uh, if there's a way to do some modest social distancing inside with two people, that's something that we might uh, allow. We're allowing two people into the uh, study rooms. Study rooms. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe we can try to make something equivalent to that. But, but it's going to be trial and error. Let's see how we start out. And, uh, you know, we'll be on this, I think, every monthly meeting. Of course. Cheryl, can I ask a question? Um, what is the seating like outside? And is there a way for us to promote people being able to go out and have their coffee on a bench or? picnic area or something? That's a good point. We did have seating outside. We can resume, you know, weather permitting. So that's a good point. All right, any further discussion about the blue teapot? Okay, then we'll see how things go, uh, the opening on the 22nd and take it up at our next meeting. Okay. Uh, okay, the next item, uh, C, is just want to flag for a discussion, probably in more substantive policy next month, but I just want to bring this up. Um, Sherelle has been look, looking into the use of the outdoor spaces around the library. Uh, today, we have one example of the domestic violence uh, crisis center using or sharing, we're sharing the Rose Garden for Divya there. Uh, other people have done other things outside. And my concern here is that 
we try to come up with a sort of a general generic policy that is applicable to many different situations so that the library doesn't get accused of making decisions based on the content of what the groups want to do. I think that leaves us vulnerable to uh, accusations that we're favoring a group and have no policy. And just to avoid that possible predicament, uh, I hope to work with Sherelle to come up with some very general guidelines because uh, especially in the era of COVID, the outdoor space around the library becomes much more important as a resource, both for the public to use, for display of events, for who knows, concerts, you know, poetry readings, author events. Um, and if we have no policy, then we have no basis for really saying yes or no. Um, and I think that leaves us vulnerable, quite frankly. So uh, I'm just putting you on notice that I'm going to try to work to come up with some general guidelines um, because um, I know there was there was an incident with the staff several months ago where uh, some groups were trying to use it and it caused a problem. So I don't really have anything to report other than that. I'm just putting people on notice that I hope you'll start thinking about that and I'm going to try to circulate something uh, with Sherelle. Uh, Alex, on that point, would it be helpful to see what Parks and Recs have for their policy, seeing this is city property? Uh, there might be some sure. connection. Sure, that's a good idea, Patsy. Good. Um, All right. And um, also, is, is that does that include like, the food trucks? Um, does that because I I've seen like I don't I don't know how the food trucks works outside because a lot of people gather when the food mm -hmm. truck is there in front of the library and I don't know if that's related to the library or not related to the library or it's not related to the library but that's a very good point but no it's not related. Well, look, they use city streets. They are permitted by the health department. And you know, I, I wasn't thinking of including the people who stand in line for a food truck as part of an outdoor policy. This more is really for kind of library related activities and people who want to use the library as a site to draw attention to their you know, positions or resources or, or other things. I had to look upon that more as kind of incidental to the library. Okay, the, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I was just asking that because that's one of the things that I do see the yeah. outside of the library actually being used for yeah. a lot. So. Yeah. Okay, and the same thing goes for item number D under my report. I've been reading some articles that perhaps it's a result of COVID or perhaps just an evolution of uh, policies that libraries around the country are starting to uh, become what is called the library of things in which things other than literary related or media related items are loaned out by libraries. And I've got an article to circulate to you all. And I'm interested in having Sherelle talk with the staff about this. What are these things? Well, these are things like kitchen uh, devices or uh, tools for household repairs, that kind of thing. Um, there are libraries that are starting to do this. And I thought it worth us having a discussion of whether or not it's something that we wanna look into to expand the resources of the library and serve additional needs. Right now, we are a library of things when it comes to hotspots, when it comes to laptops, when it comes to toys, obviously books and DVDs and uh, recorded books. Do we want to expand into these other areas? I don't really have a position about it, but I thought it worth having a discussion. So I'll circulate an article I have about this with some examples. I'll ask Sherelle to talk it over with the supervisors and staff. And maybe at the uh, October meeting, we can 
uh, start a discussion about it. Uh, finally, uh, under E, as I mentioned at the last uh, meeting, um, uh, State Representative Sims is making an effort to get some bonding funds for improvements to the Sono Branch Library. And I think uh, rather than that it being just an ad hoc kind of effort, we need to have uh, a board committee to represent our interest to make sure that the issues being discussed for funding are ones that we feel are priorities and that we know won't jeopardize other funding from the city. So I thought I would do is to uh, appoint a uh, committee or subcommittee of the board uh, to work with Sherelle and I and uh, State Representative uh, Sims about this. Um, sometimes the legislature uh, authorizes bonding things, but sometimes doesn't always fund them, depending on whether the city has done other preliminary design work or construction pre-approval work or blueprints or kinds of things. So it's quite a complicated process to access state money, as I'm sure Patsy Brescia knows from her efforts to do so, so successfully at the mansion. Um, so I'm just going to suggest that I can get a group of us together to work with uh, uh, Travis um, on this. So thank you. So uh, Sherelle, I recognize you for your uh, report. Okay, so um, we've discussed the next phase reopening and thank you to you all for, um, for approving it. So the city um, has decided to undergo um, having a third party evaluation company that will come in to perform an overall security evaluation on libraries. It, they've done it in the past um, for the city and the school, but they're including the library this year, which I, which I applaud. Um, the library technology and the city IT are working together on a project and the goal is to improve the library cybersecurity. I think it's worth stating, uh, just if I could add that when we discuss this with Lamond, obviously municipalities around the country have been held hostage mm -hmm. by hackers who can freeze city uh, IT connections and then demand ransom in order to unfreeze the city's IT accounts. And the idea of this is that since the library is now tied into the city email, for example, that we make sure that cybersecurity for the library is no less efficient than for other city departments so that these uh, hackers who demand ransom can't get in to the city through the library. And that's the sort of the basis of it. Shall I move on? Yep. Somebody has a phone call. So um, um, last month I reported that we're the recipient of the American Rescue Plan grants to Connecticut public libraries. And so um, we've ordered and received uh, the main library chairs. Um, we've ordered uh, the solar charging station uh, for both libraries. And I just want to note that we were granted um, an additional amount of money. And originally, we were just going to order one for uh, the main library, but we were given additional money to order um, the solar charging station for uh, the Sono library as well. Um, the personal protective equipment has come in and it's sort of taking over my office until we distribute it. And just today we ordered um, the acoustic, the soundproof acoustic office study uh, room pod. So we're really excited about that. And tomorrow we will order the um, chairs for the main library. Uh, where's the pod gonna be located, uh, Cheryl? So the pod, so how can I explain it? Um, it'll, Ralph had a table near the end of the stacks um, the nonfiction stacks just before you get to the, um, the computer area. So we're, we're thinking of putting it there. 
And it's nice because there's a pole and, and if we decide to get another one, we can put the other on the opposite side of the pole. So right. Luis um, and I and Cindy went through the color schemes and everything today and they're, they're, everybody's very excited. <coughs> Excuse me. So it looks like um, everything is ordered with the exception of the adult chairs and those should be ordered tomorrow. So I just want to show you, we had Blues and Beyond, um, a workshop. I have, I'm sorry, I have one quick question about the American, I was just wondering how much, um, I, I'm just, I don't like the scale of how much was awarded to the library or given to the library. Um, that was in our last month. So it was, it was originally- our last meeting? Okay, I wasn't yeah. at the last meeting, so maybe- No, I, that's okay, I, I, can, I don't have, I can look it up really quickly, give me one second. So originally it was 21,459 and it ended up being roughly uh, 25,000. That's great. It's wonderful. Very excited. Um, so over the summer, um, we piloted a Blues and Beyond eight week workshop with um, Norwalk Board of Ed, uh, the Carver Center, and the After Bell After School program. It was actually their summer program. And it was really phenomenal. And the kids actually wrote their own blues song about um, playing games. So I just want to share. It's a very quick song, and I just want to share it with you. Oh no, hold on one second. I'm just trying to get the screen back. What did I do? I'm so sorry. I don't know what I did here. I don't know what's happening, but I lost my screen. No, I'm trying to find my. I guess it may not let me. That's Alex. Sorry, that's not the right one. For some reason, uh, let me just try it this way. Let's see. Can everyone see the website? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. The issue, you know what, I, I'm on the, it may not let me do it here. I'm sorry. Let's see if I turn it up.
So that's the that song is great. that they. <laughs> that is the kids, great. The kids wrote that song collectively. That is so, fantastic. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was wonderful. All right, let's see if I can get up my screen back here. Uh, okay. I just want to stop share. Okay. So I, I thought that was wonderful. So um, they, 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 that particular group is in a couple of schools in um, New York and a couple of schools in Connecticut. So there's a possibility that they may be coming to Norwalk Public Schools as well um, as part of the mandate to teach um, Black and Latino studies. So, um, so moving on, uh, the auditorium um, refresh and the capital project update. Um, so the um, so let's let's go with the Sono branch. Oh no, I'm sorry. The auto the auditorium refresh um, will be on the Common Council agenda for Tuesday, September 14th. And um, we like the group Black Box. There were four different groups. Uh, well, actually one. I mean, I'm sorry. Actually three. One of them was disqualified. Um, you know that presented. And Black Box actually came in as the lowest bidder. And surprisingly, they were the most responsive um, and had the better um, product, we thought. So um, again, it'll be on the Common Council agenda for September 14th. And um, so it'll be great to have you know, updated technology for content creation and also for streaming. So fingers crossed that it will be approved. And the Sono uh, repurposing project we had the first walkthrough with Silver Petroselli on August 31st as a precursor um, to discuss design. And the next meeting, um, because we, you know, it's a historic building, so we want to preserve the historic content. We'd like to invite David uh, Westmoreland um, to speak to that issue and also to the lighting issue um, on behalf of SNU and also um, Neil Rennie, who is, um, you know, the head of Guardian, and, you know, just to discuss, um, you know, electrical issues, foundational issues, and things like that. So I'd like to thank the board members who got us to this point so far. Um, Sharon and Janie were on that committee, and it was a really nice experience. <laughs> so thank you both. Um, and I sent everyone an email about the Solar for All project. The city of Norwalk is hosting the Solar for All, which is a program um, to increase access for affordable solar. Um, it's a nationally rec recognized program with the Connecticut Green Bank and Posigen, and they're focused on assisting low to moderate income families to reduce their energy costs. Um, the offering is a no money down affordable solar lease paired with energy efficiency and a savings guarantee uh, for all Eversource homeowners, regardless of their income or credit score. Uh, they will alternate outreach between our main library and our Sono library um, beginning September 21st and ending on October 14th. Good. I used to have solar on my roof and uh, I recommend it. Okay. And, and it looks like when hope, we're hoping that um, when we begin, that we'll have our um, outdoor sonar, or well, the solar charging stations. So um, that'll draw more attention to them. So let's see. And next we have, oh, the Griffin Health Vaccine Clinics were wonderful. Um, they returned July 17th and their last day was August 27th. And the total vaccines were 385, 139 at the main library and 246 um, at Sono. And it started off um, a little, it was slow, I guess the first week, but as you know, more and more people started talking about the, um, the variant, more and more people began to come. And then we also had FCA at both libraries on Wednesdays to give um, the real news as opposed to the fake news uh, for the vaccine hesitant. So that worked out well. And now, so will that be continuing going forward? We can, 
Um, I was on a, a meeting um, with the health department last week and I offered the library again if they wanted it, knowing that, you know, yeah. the board is in favor of it. So whether it's the, the um, what is it? The booster, I believe they're going to release in November. So whether it's the booster, whether it's testing, um, we'd love to partner with the city. That's good. And so the, the storm Ida uh, update. So we had um, water that was coming from the children's library roof at the main library. Um, and the men's bathroom on the first floor at Sono, the multi-purpose room had a little bit of water um, and our basement boiler room had a little bit of water. So we've reported that to Guardian and we're waiting to see what they're going to do about it. So hopefully I'll have an update. I think um, both roofs need to really be, be checked to make sure, be, I mean, I know that was an anomaly. It was a lot of water, but I just, I still think both roofs need to be checked. So I'll have an update, um, hopefully in a fix um, next month. And finally, in the packet, there is a letter. Um, the donor wants to be anonymous, um, but he wants to donate money to order, let's see, let's order movies. Um, So he wants to order movies um, with the categories of, you know, that have been nominated or won best picture, best actress and best actor, best director and best supporting actor and actresses. And he wants to donate it anonymously. And um, I have a list that I've given to Cindy of the, um, of some of, some of the awards. So we'll look through to see what we have and what we need to order you know, if you approve accepting this money, and I'm assuming we would have to go through um, the library foundation. Okay, well, maybe we can uh, add this item to uh, foundation. the foundation also, but uh, uh, if there, is there any, are there any questions from the board about this? Because we probably should vote to accept or, or not accept the, uh, donation. I have a quick question. Um, I think this is very cool. Um, yeah. Do we, does the library save, upload the videos onto somewhere where we can save them as a digital storage so that people can access them? Or is it truly just DVD? So it should be, it just depends on how it's available, but if, if it's available, they can download it, download our DVDs, just like you have now, you have some things that people can physically come and get, and then you have others where they can download it in our digital content. So, yeah. Uh, so Alex, cool are, those, I'm sorry, go ahead, Patsy. Could we just refer it to the foundation with a recommendation that we are in favor of it? Sure. Sure. Oh, I, and the amount um, that's being proposed is 2,500 um, and to be revisited next year maybe for other things. And the fund is the ACORN fund um, through the Fairfield County Community Foundation and the personal donor wants to remain anonymous. Okay, well, let me ask, uh, is there any objection from any member of the board to accepting the grant and having it uh, be uh, managed through the foundation? Hmm. The, as I recall, the letter requests, but doesn't insist that the collection be kind of separated as a unit with the title, I forget the title that the donor suggested. It seemed reasonable to me. Mm -hmm. uh, it was called the Academy Award Collection. Because everything in there would have been, I guess, nominated or awarded uh, an mm -hmm. Academy Award. So it seemed to make sense. <coughs> Any objection to accepting this? Does it have res restrictions on the use of the funds? I mean, they're, yes. you know, they're yes. making a donation for a specific set of purposes. Yes, to purchase DVDs of Academy Award uh, films. Best picture, best actor, best actress, best song, 
kind of uh, movies. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yes, it's restricted. All right. And there's a, a time a letter in the last page in the packet from Sherelle in your email packet contains the letter and the rather modest restrictions. Okay. I would just say that uh, DVD players are not, I feel like the vast majority of people are streaming, not watching DVDs. Um, So that's just something to, I know you you said that there's a streaming capability. There is a streaming Uh, capability, but we do have the older generation who um, prefer DVDs. So we do have people still taking out DVDs. Um, but normally, well, I guess it just depends on the, the rights and the availability, but most of these things should be, you know, we should have the capability to stream. Well, in any event, this gets us the content and then how it gets disseminated. Hopefully we'll make it as broad as possible for streaming and for- uh, so we're and for- comment. I like to back up what was just said by Moina. Um, when it comes to the um, DVDs, donor wise alone, in the last maybe three days, I say almost 1,500 packaged DVDs have been given. They're in box loads. So people and companies are letting their DVDs go. Mm-hmm. And um, we put anything that has even a slight use, we just put it out for free. But the ones which are in excellent condition, you know, they're still a sales item. But it's like all technology is changing very, very fast. I mean, the same way the entire CD collection, the library, has been given away for free, going out every day to the public. So technology is getting ahead of us here. But keep in mind that it's true, the DVD is probably on its way out too. But right now we have a huge amount. Well, then how do we explain why LP records are coming back in style? Maybe they're going to be edible <laughs> for all we know. I'd like to see that Cullen collection of LPs. Right. <laughs> now you probably have the 45s. Right. Yeah. No, not quite. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So thank you, Sherelle. Any further questions for Sherelle or uh, comments? If not, then we'll go to uh, old business and want to uh, acknowledge that uh, Mohinder Kelsey is uh, joining, has been joining uh, as a guest tonight. And uh, we offered him the opportunity to add any new information or material that he wanted to present along with his request and he has uh, declined to do so but is interested in the discussion. As you know, the policy that we adopted on requests to remove materials from the library's collection, uh, we added the provision of uh, seeking a recommendation from the uh, librarian and uh, Sherelle has done so in her report. Uh, I'll recognize her in a moment to presented if she would like. I sent around earlier tonight by email my recommendation for what the board should do um, as a uh, draft statement on our on a decision, uh, which revises uh, somewhat what Sherelle has proposed. So why don't we start with uh, Sherelle's uh, presenting her recommendation. So I looked at this from um very many angles. As you know, the public libraries follow the guidelines of the American Library Association, also known as ALA, um, an organization that actively defends intellectual freedom, which is the right to read, seek information and speak freely as uh, guaranteed by the First Amendment. The American Library Association describes intellectual freedom as a core value of the library profession and a basic right on our democratic society. A publicly supported library provides free, equitable, and confidential access to information for all people of its community. ALA's freedom to read principles 
guide libraries to, pr to provide a wide, a wide range, excuse me, of views, including thoughts that are unpopular. ALA's Bill of Rights can be summarized as not censoring information in books that are deemed offensive. I spoke with both the American Library Association Office of Intellectual Freedom and the chair of the Connecticut Library Association's Office for Intellectual Freedom, who also came um, to report at one of our board meetings. And I spoke to other librarians. So with ALA's guidelines in mind, it is my recommendation that we not remove the book um, from our catalog. And I, and I just wanna point out that um, I empathize um, you know, with this endeavor. And in a wonderful world, you know, there would be some compromise. Uh, my thoughts for this compromise would be to remove the book from our shelves, um, but make it available upon request. Um, but I'm not sure that that would quite solve the problem. And I would like to recommend that Mr. Uh, Mohinder and his group make their dissatisfaction and their request known to the publisher in an effort to get them to cease publication. Thank you, Sherelle. Um, so I've circulated a uh, modification of Sherelle's recommendation. Um, and uh, my advice to the board is that we uh, also not remove the book from our catalog, but that we not segregate the book in a separate special shelf or collection. Because I think this invites us to go down a slippery slope of having other groups or individuals that object to content in the library seeking to put that book or that media or that DVD into a special collection that has to be requested by an individual. I think this amounts to kind of an apartheid of books in which there are some good books in the library and then there are other books that are somehow tainted and individuals have to request it. Um, I think it's a slippery slope because it invites rather than deters others to seek removal of materials that should be available to the public, even though they may be offensive or disagreeable because under the First Amendment, those are the essence of democracy and the marketplace of ideas. I think cutting the baby in half here doesn't work because it simply invites more books. And if somebody could say, well, if the book that the Sikhs object to is on a special shelf, why shouldn't a book on critical race theory that we don't like be on a special shelf? Why shouldn't Huck Finn be on a special shelf? It's interesting, my wife is doing research about the 1930s and came across a discussion about a, a book in a Vermont library in Middlebury. And in that episode in, the 1930, in 1939, someone objected to the Grapes of Wrath being in the library because they considered its author to be too liberal. And the library did not uh, refused to have the book, but they made it available on a special shelf and individuals had requested individually. It seems to me the other danger here is that we protect the anonymity of library patrons in their selection of what to read, what to see, what to use, and to have a special shelf that has to be requested by an individual to me undermines that principle of anonymity and free th freedom of thought and freedom from uh, having someone know what books you're reading or movies you're viewing. Um, so my recommendation is that we take Sherelle's uh, draft and when the draft goes to the last uh, sentence and saying, um, I sincerely empathize that we delete uh, all of the recommendation from that point to the end. Uh, finally, I appreciate what Shirella said about contacting the publisher, but I don't think that's the role of the library to make that recommendation or to give that advice. That's something that uh, Mr. Kelsey can do if he wishes to, 
but for us to make recommendations on this item that the publisher be contacted seems to me to go a step beyond what our role should be. Um, so that's my recommendation to the board and I'm gonna move that as our statement and open the floor for discussion and amendment or revision of the draft. So Alex, I, I just wanna point out that um, while it, you know, I said in a perfect world or in a world of compromise, that that would be nice. I don't think that would solve um, the, the issue. However, I don't feel that there is an issue with asking him or giving him another form of advice. It's not that we're going to do it, but it's another option. If people are unhappy with a book that's in a library, the library didn't print the book, the publisher did. So I don't think that, so we can agree to disagree. I don't think that there's an issue with making that suggestion to have them go on their own to, to try to get the publisher to cease. So I, I just wanna state that. All right, I'll address that later on too. So are there uh, other comments or uh, opinions from members of the board? Well, for me, I don't, uh, and for my objective, I don't see why we can't separate it. Um, still let it be in the library. And I don't think it's going to be an issue if someone requests a book. They request books all the time. And it's not like that's a new thing. Um, people come in and request a book that they want. And it doesn't make them, there, and it, that doesn't make them, everybody know what they're reading or whatever. So I don't see an issue with that. I think if that helps to resolve um, their concerns, I think we should do it. Um, uh, that's just my opinion. Any additional comment? Uh, yes. I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Patsy. I was just going to say, I think uh, that we uh, as a board and staff have spent a lot of time uh, really thinking about this very seriously and appropriately so. And I, I think we've come to a, a, a good decision that makes sense to me. So I'm, I'm in favor of, uh, of the suggested language that's been presented. I am also in favor of um, um, our decision, you know, to allow it to remain. Um, sure. I would be abstaining from this only because originally I supported what Sherelle put out with making a compromise, but I haven't looked through that email that was sent, I think a couple hours ago with the revisions and I would have to sit down with it. I just, you know, it simply deletes the last sentence of what Sherelle sent around. All right. My problem with it is the fact that it might establish a precedent. Right. It starts with one book to lead to another for entirely different reasons. And I think it's hard on the board, it's hard on the staff when you have a segregated book. And if they're requesting it, it's like going to the, well, if you see it's discretion ladies, when you go to the old variety store, you want a certain magazine, you had to request it because it was banned from being shown publicly, but it was behind the counter. And I think it's important that we give all books an equal value. And it's not up to us. We should not establish a precedent. I think we should stick to our guns as much as it hurts some people. But I think we should be fair to everybody. The book is available. And, but there's no reason why books are counteracted. Can't be added to the collection. If there's another viewpoint, get the book on the shelf. Offer more than one viewpoint. Um, I, I like, um, like Patsy said, we have spent a fair amount of time talking about this and I agree with the statement, um, that Sherelle has, um, put together and with the edits that Alex has suggested, I agree that having a separate shelf, um, 
I'm not sure if we even have one now would really um, would be the best solution for all the re for the reasons that Ralph and, and Alex stated. I would like to say that um, on a personal note, um, as a member of religious minority and an ethnic minority, um, like there, there, it, I can really relate. Like there are a lot of books that I feel um, are very painful to look at. The ideas of which are, um, but you know, um, having studied kind of like this freedom of expression and um, as integral to American democracy, um, short of like true hate speech being promoted in the library. Um, I think that this is kind of the social contract we we make with each other is that we um, we you know we allow for for this kind of freedom even in spite of some um, of personal um, offense. Okay. Any further uh, discussion or comment? Then uh, sort of as a matter of procedure, um, uh, could I suggest that we vote on my proposed uh, revision? And if the vote is in favor, then that becomes our statement. If the vote is against that, then we'd go back to Sherelle's original full statement. Does that seem a reasonable yes. approach? Okay. So, uh, so let me ask. So, uh, uh, so do you, how do you vote on the revision that I have suggested, uh, Mary? I am in support of your revision, um, not to remove the books, the book from our shelves. Okay, hey, Janie. I am approve of what Sherelle wrote to remove it and put it on a separate, separate shelf. I'll count that as a no on my revision. Ralph? Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I will vote for the revision. Okay, Patsy? Yes. Okay, uh, Moina? Moina? Okay. Tom? I was a yes. Yeah, I'm a yes. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Thank you, Moira. Tom? He's muted too, I think. Oh, uh, maybe not. Uh, Sharon? I'd like to abstain. Okay, I vote yes. So, Tom, can you hear us? Okay. Um, well, I have then uh, five in favor, uh, one against, one abstention, and one not voting. So the uh, revision is approved. And uh, I know Mahindar is listening tonight, but we'll also uh, communicate that formally by email to him. Thank you. Um, is there any new business anyone would like to bring up tonight? Um, if you don't mind, I'd just like to mention that the work on the rear hall, it's been finished now for two, two whole days. Um, all the new electric work, new carpeting, uh, so it's basically what's going to be replacing the book sale in the auditorium. It's a display of books. Everything is for sale, prints on the walls. Everything is for the public. It's an extension of the ongoing sales that are over on the south side of the building in the main entry. Um, we will, the only thing left to do now is to bring out the remaining uh, trade paperbacks. Um, Space-wise, we will be occupying about a third 
of what we did in the auditorium. And for planning purposes, it should be noted that when we had the book sales in the auditorium, it took four weeks out of the calendar for that room. By not having the sale there, four weeks have just been returned for other organizations and, and uh, for other departments now to utilize the room. So I think in many respects, it's a good trade-off. That's good to hear, Ralph. Thank you. Um, uh, Cheryl, can you just remind us of the date that the Zoom invite for the foundation was sent out? It was sent out a while ago. It's one of those links that's standing. It stays the same once you register and you receive the link. It remains the same. Yeah, but you got to find it. Um, I, that's, yeah, I did resend it to you when you I requested. know, I know, but every month, you know, we have to go back, you know, months to get it. So it's helpful if we get it renewed for us old people who can't find our files. You're not old, Miss Patsy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to bookmark it, but no, I, I, I can send it out every week, every okay. month. That's not a problem. Thanks. Can you send it out to, right now? Of course. Okay. And, and, so, and it's helpful to... for me if people would let me know prior, like when I send it out, if you don't have it, just as Patsy did, she let me know right away that she didn't have it, then I can just send it right out. Give me one second. Okay, well, so we can adjourn, right? A motion to yes. adjourn. So while while uh, while she's doing that, is there a motion to adjourn? I move. Thank you, Patsy. All in favor, say aye. All right, thank you. So we'll see you in a few minutes. All right, bye-bye. I'll send it out thank now. You. Thank you. Is it going to all of us?